Who want one last trip to the long trail? If you play Tekken for long enough, you'll eventually hear someone say that story does not matter. This is a fighting game and all that matters is gameplay, the mechanics, the combos, how the game feels. And I kind of disagree with that because I think, yes, all of that stuff is kind of at the forefront of what makes any game great. But also I think the way that we really fall in love with a game is through the characters, is through the story, is through the development. We learn to love our favorite characters, rivals, their allies, their goals, their objectives. What mistakes have they made in the past and also how do they want to progress in the future. The sad thing about the Tekken franchise is a lot of characters, they never progress, they never move. Yoshimitsu has been in every single game. But what has he done of significance besides his interaction with Brian Fury and saving his life? Ever since then, he's been stuck in limbo. I'll give you another example, Dragunov. Dragunov was put in the game in Tekken 5 DR. That character has pretty much done nothing for the whole entire time. And it's sad because Dragunov is one of the most beloved characters in the game. He's extremely popular. People want to see what the White Angel of Death brings to the story. Same thing with characters like Bruce, Raven, Fang Wei, Asuka, Lily. We want to see these characters and their story develop and grow and, and, and just progress. But Tekken never seems to deliver. And in this video, I want to talk about a tweet from Harada that is acknowledging this. Before I read that tweet, I have another tweet that shows the significance of the Tekken story as a whole. Not just fighting games, but in gaming as a whole. I'll read it. If you're wondering how big the Tekken storyline is, this is true. Tekken holds the Guinness World Record for the longest running cohesive storyline in a video game. Not longest running in a fighting game, no, in every video game that was ever made. And this also speaks to why they will never reboot it. We saw in Tekken 7 where they wanted to change some things of the past and they just simply retconned the story. And yes, it makes the story confusing and it frustrates the people who played those games back in the day. But you can see that the reason why they do that is because they have to. They have to keep the story going. They have to keep the story progressing. And the reason why I want to mention this tweet is because it's crazy to think that Tekken 7 has the longest running story, yet some of the characters in the story have got no story, no progression. The next tweet here is in Japanese, but we can translate it to English. Tekken 7's story mode, the Mishima Saga, was a mess. Downloadable content is fine, so I want another story of other characters. I'm curious about the story after season four, that I'm delusional. The Japanese translation kind of muddies it up, but basically what they're saying is, the Tekken 7, the Mishima Saga was a mess. I think everyone can agree with this. The narrator, the retcons, the way that Lars was acting, it was all kind of like funny. But I think Harada already acknowledges, he said that he wanted to add more to the story. There was cutscenes and things that they had to scrap. You could look up on YouTube and see so many any deleted cutscenes, deleted interactions. He even said the slideshow, the pictures that are shown during the narration was not supposed to be there. The whole entire story of Tekken 7 was supposed to be completely different, but for whatever reason, they made it the way that it is. And that does not stick well with Harada. But also the second sentence here, it talks about wanting story for other characters, not just the Mishimas, not just Jan and Kazuya. We have played so many Tekken games and only the Mishimas has progressed. Where are the other characters progression? Every single game, they want the same thing, but then at the end of the game, they never can achieve it. This is where Harada's response comes in. He says, thank you very much. The area around story is one of the themes we want to strengthen in the future. And the future is basically talking about Tekken 8. This tweet was put out in December 28, 2020. So this is literally at the end of season four when you have to imagine they shifted all of their attention to Tekken 8. The reason why this tweet is so old is because after season four came out, there was a whole year where the developers did not say anything. They did not update Tekken 7. A lot of people was waiting to see a season five. Of course, the pandemic played a role in it, but it really was like a whole year 
of silence. And in that silence, they were working on technique. They were trying to ask Radice strengthen the story in the future. And this kind of goes back to what Harada was saying in the Tekken 8 interviews. In those news articles, he was talking about Jun Kazama, Jin, and wanting to flesh out the story. So many answers and questions and clues that we were given so long ago, but we have never got an answer to. And I think progressing the story starts there. Some of the longest running questions, we're now going to get an answer to it. But also, too, when you talk about just the roster as a whole, I think they are crafting the story in a way that makes room for them. One discussion that I have kind of frequently on the live stream is the return of Heiachi. A lot of people want Heiachi back in the story, not just on the base roster, not just, you know, playable, but they want him in the story. And the reason why I'm against that is because his presence in the story it's part of the reason why we never got development for the other characters too, because here's the thing, right? This is what they specifically said about Heiachi. First off, at the start of Tekken 7, Harada said that the rivalry between the Mishimas will end with the death of one of them. At the end of Tekken 7, we saw that that death was Heiachi. But also what they said in the Tekken 8 interview is one of the reasons why Kazuya is now so aggressive, so destructive. In the trailer, we saw him wiping out New York City. They said the reason why he's doing this now is because Heiachi is gone. Heiachi has always been a roadblock to him achieving his goals, taking over full control of the globe. They literally said that Kazuya is in control of the globe. And you could just see how Heiachi was preventing him from doing that for all this time. And I hate to say it, but I would assume the same is true for all the other characters on the roster. Heiachi is a very big, important character. One thing that I will say just wrapping off this video is just looking at some of the non-canon material, I can see that they want to add more characters in. There are some comics that released after Tekken 7 and in those comics, they do include more character. Yoshimitsu, the panda, Paul Phoenix, Zhao Yu, Nina, Anna. Like you can see, I'll put the screenshots up, but you can see with those comics, how they do try to include more characters. Also too, is the Pachenko slot machines. Yes, you do have one here or there that focuses on Mecha Heiachi or Kazuya or Jin, but they do give a space for a character like Mardok, Armor King, King. To wrap off this video, I do think that Tekken 8 will be different. Not just in terms of gameplay, not just in terms of being detached from arcades or having better netcode or all these things, but I also think it will be better in terms of story. For the first time ever, we will see a Tekken really try to give us a story unlike any other. Tekken 7, they attempted it, but for whatever reason, they just couldn't live up to it. This time around, they will have all the resources to make that dream a reality. With that, I want to end the video. Thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.